Hi, this is your host, Brian Madman McNally, uh, back again with yet another apology. Um, so this week I found out how to use two mics on the same laptop so that Aaron and I could record comfortably on two separate mics rather than using one mic and sitting uncomfortably close to one another. And as a result, I had previously had the mic set on the highest possible uh, sensitivity setting to pick us both up so that we wouldn't have to be so close to the mic and so close to one another. And I did not realize that I should have turned down the sensitivity when we recorded this week's review. Uh, and so as a result, there is an echo that plays throughout the episode that unfortunately I was not able to figure out how to remove the echo. Uh, nothing I could find online would help me out given that we are both recording in the same room in a play setting that is not a professional recording studio. So I do apologize for that. Aaron and I are still figuring out this whole podcasting thing, but I am getting more comfortable with editing in Audacity. And I've also noticed as well that Aaron and I are both getting more comfortable recording and we're starting to gain traction in our chemistry so just continue to bear with us here as we learn and grow. So without further ado, let's get to the episode. Hi, I'm your host, Brian Mad Mad McNally. And I'm Aaron Darkhazer Banzon. And today on Dead End Comics, we are reviewing Fun Home, a family tragic comic by Alison Bechdel. Uh, now to start off, uh, some of you more cultured people out there might recognize... <laughs> <laughs> might recognize Fun Home as the uh, musical from 2013, which I've not seen, although I'm kind of curious how this book was turned into a musical. Yeah, I'm curious too, like after reading through it, uh, how? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would assume that they'd have to make it like maybe more linear in mm-hmm. tone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, and then uh, Bechdel, you might know that name if you know what the Bechdel test is, which is it is derived from one of Allison Bechdel's uh, earlier comics, uh, Central Dykes to Look Out For, which was a uh, running comic strip that uh, played in a few different uh, alternate newspapers. And the uh, Bechdel test was uh, it came from a comic in which two uh, women are talking, and one of them has a, she talks about rules she has about movies, which is that she won't watch a movie Unless it has at least two women who talk to each other at some point about something other than a man. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Personally, like, I don't really think it works as, as, in as far as determining the quality of a movie. I think it's a bad, it's bad for that. But in terms of as a, as a tool to show how few women are represented in media, I think it's good for that, especially in in films and television. Yeah, I suppose so. But, you know, I really judge movies by story. But No, you know, that's what I said. It's just, like I said, the way I view it, it's it's more, it's a good way of looking at how how few women there are in uh, in films. Yeah. Uh, But without further ado, uh, let's uh, get into the review. Let's start off with you. What what were your thoughts since they're more recent? Hmm. It was really thick. Like, it's a really thick book, guys. And... Also, it really went into details, surprise actually, and it really shows that even though we think that human life is really simple, but this book really does show the reality that, like, yeah, it may be simple at times, but a lot of times it's also actually way more complex than we realize. And like, even in the little details, like, it's very complex. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it and really like a kind of a reminder of how our everyday lives are like it's not just that simple like there's so many complex things especially what we think of what goes through our mind because we really went into her mind since this is technically autobiography right yeah so yeah like i really appreciate that attention to detail and uh, the art is interesting enough like it's not your typical comic book stuff it's more like a comic book strip from newspapers if you ask me uh, yeah, actually, I, I did want to talk about that before we uh, got into more of the story and the writing of it, uh, even though we normally I like to save the art for a, a later time, but in this one, I kind of want to start off with it. Because, mm-hmm. it, yeah, you're right, it is something that is closer to a uh, a comic strip from a newspaper, which, once again, I think ties into how she uh, began uh, with, her, uh, with her comic strip. Mm-hmm. 
And th- there's also, too, something about the simplicity in uh, not just her own art, but generally the art that you see in comics, uh, in the newspaper, that is. That it's the same thing, too, that what makes the something like The Simpsons a little bit more relatable is that simple art style. It, it's something about it is more connected, even if, as opposed to, uh, you know, in a lot of the more mainstream comics where there's, a, especially the more modern ones, where there's a lot more detail and a lot more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's something about the simple art style that just makes things easier to, to compare yourself to. Yeah, I could see that. I can see that. Like, uh, and also too, something else I, th- I just want to mention as well. I don't know if you noticed this, but she draws one of her two brothers. Uh, um, uh, every time she draws him, he, he she always draws him looking like a younger version of her dad. Which I don't know if you noticed that, but if you go back and look at the way she draws her brother, at one point too, I was even confused because it's like. <laughs> I think it was at the funeral or something like that, and it's like, wait, I thought her dad was dead. It's like, oh no, that's okay, her brother. I, I think I noticed that part. I think I noticed that part. I was like, um, wait a minute, like, who's this again? <laughs> yeah, I guess that uh, that says a lot of how she sees her brother. Dang. No, well, I'm sorry, uh, I was a brother, but <laughs> yeah, uh, but. Um... <laughs> But yeah, going into the the story though, this one's uh, kind of a hard one to uh, to review and talk about, if only because it. The thing I like about Fun Home is that it doesn't tell a linear story. Mm. It's more of it feels more like a discussion. Like the way I I believe I described this to you when I handed the book to you was uh, I described it as a graphic essay. You did? <laughs> yes. I don't remember that, but yeah, I, I see it as a graphic ex- essay. Like, as you said, it's nonlinear. It keeps on going back and forth, back and forth between different points of her life and her father's life even. So, yeah, and it really is more of a discussion because each of the chapters, like, really stuck to some sort of specific theme, especially about her father. Yeah, that goes into another thing, uh, poignant thing as well, is how each chapter is more about a theme than about a particular story. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a pretty it's a pretty deep dive, and uh, I also suspect too that uh, next week, uh, just because of also the it's going to be a little hard to do a spoiler cast, and, yeah. And you know, even now it's hard to think of like what is a spoiler and what's not. So yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to the story though, I, so the the way I also like to describe this is that so it is uh, Bechdel is looking back on her relationship with her father now that uh, she is aware that he was in. Uh, multiple gay relationships, mm-hmm. and uh, something else to also appreciate was how uh, you know she she doesn't try to ask the uh, audience to sympathize with her father, and uh, yeah. even to some extent too, I feel like she doesn't entirely sympathize with him as well, because mm-hmm. uh, she does hint at how he may have been physically abusive. Yeah, and uh, she also makes no bones about how uh, he slept with uh, some teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really does show the complexity of uh, even the modern family. Like, show the like not every family is perfect, and like I was kind of like when when I read that as like pretty much a tragedy, like this this graphical essay. I was like, oh man, what am I getting myself into? And then like like lo and behold, the first page describing the father. I was like, oh. Uh, uh, for the record, by the way, uh, for those of you listening out here, and also to Aaron, uh, this is kind of an outlier in regards to the things that we'll usually be reviewing yeah and i'll uh towards the end too i'll, I'll also talk about why i chose this as the uh, second book yes he will tell you but, but going back into the story though something else i i also uh kind of enjoyed as well to to an extent only because i'm not a very well-read person but there are there are a lot of literary allegories in the uh in in the book like she's often comparing herself to other fictional characters yeah I, i'm not a very literary person too like in regards to literature but like i could tell like she's uh comparing herself to this one fictional character or another one or to this story or that story and i do really appreciate that it really tells you uh what kind of person she is yeah like it, it gives you like a, a good idea of like how and even at one point too when uh she talks about how uh how her life was so much about literature 
with her uh, dad being an English teacher as well as her mother being an English teacher and how uh, books and plays were a large part of her life growing up. And uh, like, so to give an example, at one point she's talking about how her dad would select some students and take, take them home and uh, give them books, try to give them an education beyond the classroom. And she compares uh, him to the great Gatsby. Mm. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting, too. Like, the teacher, like, the father, like, goes far beyond, like, his teaching duties. Yes, or uh, there's also, uh, I'll mention more <laughs> in the uh, spoiler discussion, but, uh, or maybe I won't, <laughs> uh, even for it being a spoiler discussion, but uh, but there is the part where she uh, compares her uh, her first sexual experience to uh, um, to Odysseus going into the cave of the Cyclops. Oh, oh yeah, I, I I remember that. That is kind of fresh in my mind. So, uh, yeah, but th- there is something too. I mean, the, about this book that, with it being an autobiography, makes it uniquely relatable. Because even the you know obviously, neither uh, you or myself can relate to being a lesbian in the eighties. Mm, no, we cannot. We're we're both dudes too. So yeah. But, you know, there's something about it that you can relate to on a human level, even if you can't relate to it on a personal level, you know. And, and mm-hmm. there are other things that, you know, you can relate to on a personal level as well. One of my favorite moments uh, being when she's talking about a class that she took that only had one other student. <laughs> and just I can't remember what the name of the book was, but it's a book that is essentially a, a modern retelling of the Odyssey. Oh, and she no. just... Yeah, and she just says, like, you know, at some point, once you've figured out that it's just a, a modern retelling of the Odyssey, do you really have to go into detail about every little way it is? Oh, I know. Like, even though, like, I love interpreting every single thing in stuff I read, I'm like, yeah, it, it could get annoying a lot of times. Yeah, no, and I, I that's that's one of those parts, too. It's like, that's just relatable, because, like, who hasn't been in that, like, uh, that point where it's like, you know, you have to do homework. Mm-hmm. And it's like, do I really have to go in depth in this? Do you think I'm that stupid that yeah. you have to make sure I know all this? <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I don't miss college about that, but whatever. Yeah, no, uh, me neither. <laughs> also, too, just uh, something else I enjoyed was also the the kind of uh, dark comedy. Oh yeah, like I'm not really a dark comedy kind of guy, but I did learn to appreciate it. Yeah, yeah no, she just has this kind of... Uh, way of making fun of her uh the stuff that happened in her life and yeah well you know she has a you know an attitude about it or it's like yeah it's kind of messed up but mm-hmm. but at the same time too she she tries to to make it funny to the audience yeah yeah you know, uh, just try to make like you know have have fun have your fun with it you know like even though it doesn't have to all be all dark and gloomy you know yeah, and, and something else, too, in, in uh, regards to the art as well that benefits it to the comedy is how all the characters seem to have this kind of, like, bored look on their face oh, I if know. they're not reacting to something. Oh, I know. I was like, uh, are they okay or something? Do they look okay? Like, <laughs> what was she thinking when drawing these? But I'm like, okay. I, I like, think it's I mean, our style. I mean, if you look at candid photos of people, that's how I think people are most of the time. Yeah, but, you know, this is comics we're talking about. But this is a different kind of comic. Uh, and, and I think it, it's also kind of funny, too. Like, I would love to know what her family thinks about the way that they <laughs> they were drawn in the comic. <laughs> or even, like, you know, portrayed and, like... And if they think like, hey, that is not true or something like that, or like, you know, like they have their own different perspective on their experiences. Yeah. But yeah, it's also too, it's it's really personal. Like, yeah, it really is. Like uh, just the stuff that she goes into is like, wow, I uh, like even I don't think I could do that. Yeah, no, like I. Like I can be honest with my friends, but mm-hmm. to to be honest with the entire world, that's on a whole mm-hmm. different level. Yeah, and I have a lot of respect for that. Yeah, I really do. Like, like maybe I could like go up to a few people and do all that, but like, yeah, just write it out and like write down even the deepest, darkest secrets. Like, ooh, that is uh, very scary. And yeah, I re- I do respect her for that. Yeah, too, especially just like you know, even just being able to. To admit that, like, uh, you know, just 
yeah. everyone wants to at least make it out like you know they had the ideal childhood and mm-hmm. stuff like that and uh, she she yeah. doesn't try to do that here obviously um as we said she's been very honest too and just mm-hmm. like one of the things that i also like too because my relationship with my dad it my is is good it's certainly uh mm-hmm. it's good but it's like there's even too there's things where like we don't really connect on certain things yeah it's like i could even feel that with uh between her and her dad like how she always wanted uh, or he always wanted her to be more feminine and mm-hmm. he, she even like says right there on the page she uses the word sissy to describe him at one point <laughs> yeah yeah so just you know also just being honest about how she feels about him mm. and uh, something i also found out recently too we might uh review it at a a much later date is uh, she apparently wrote a companion book to this called are you my mother it really? focuses on her relationship with her oh, mother ooh, ooh, ooh. yeah i want it to be a while until we do another mm-hmm. yeah. another heavy one <laughs> yeah like is it really that heavy I, I I wouldn't know. I haven't read it. Oh, okay. Well, I thought you would, but oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess also too, just mention a uh, my own quick personal history with this book. Um, I found out 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 about this book. It it had uh, there had been a a news story going around a few years ago. Um, something about how this this book was assigned as an as an extra credit reading assignment in an English course at some college and. Uh, really? Yeah, and this guy uh, felt offended that uh, <laughs> that he would be asked to read something that portrayed uh, homosexual sex and something about how he I should have looked this up before I started recording this. Mm. Yeah, you probably should. But it was—I I remember though—it was yeah. very specific to it being a, a graphic novel, and he was saying yeah. like, hey, "If it were liter, if it were literature, I wouldn't mind, but because mm-hmm. it's visual, it offends me." But, no. Yeah. Yeah, I I thought it was meh. Like, and, and also too, the well, the, the weird thing as well is that like those those parts of the book they're not like s- sexual in a pornographic way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very mundane. Yeah, it it really is because you know the art of the whole thing is like you know like interesting, but like no, it's not like you know like amazingly amazing, you know. Yeah, but. Yeah, so I, I I wanted to review this book in part because it was one of the two books, the other one being The Watchmen, that inspired me to start the Dead End comics. But also because I, I wanted to set the tone for what the po- uh, potential was for what we would p- uh, be reviewing on the show. No, oh. yeah, I, I just I just heard about you know like we're reviewing books that you know have an ending. But you know, there's more to that too. Yeah, no, and and from here on out, uh, for the most part, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, as well. Uh, but also more, uh, you know, I'm generally skewing towards more adult stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Surprise, like uh, next week's book. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so join us back next week for our spoiler discussion on Fun Home. Uh, we uh, likely just, if you're listening to this in the far future, we likely will not be having any listener mail since we're still starting out here trying to find a way to get an audience. Uh, and then also, we will be starting up a new segment that will be done on a monthly basis called Force of the Month. And what it is, is on the fourth of each month, we will be reviewing a Star Wars comic. And in case you're wondering, yes, it was inspired by the celebrated Star Wars holiday. May the 4th be with you. Yes, it has. But, you know, we, we don't want to use the 4th kind of thing like like that. So, like, yeah. force is better. Yeah. And so our first book that we will be reviewing is the five-issue miniseries, Lando Calrissian. Woo! Wait, no. It's just called Lando. Yeah, just Lando. Like, young Lando, right? Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's. Uh, well, I mean, it's slightly slight, younger yeah. Lando. Yeah, slightly young. By two years. <laughs> That's so young. So yeah, yeah. So we'll be re- we will be reviewing Lando on the fourth of November, and unlike our regular, unlike our regular reviews, uh, we won't be doing a follow up spoiler cast. Rather, we'll be doing both in one episode. So for the uh, fourth of the month reviews, you'll have an entire uh, month to. Get, uh, get those books and read them and send in your email and uh, once again with some of these early comics like 
Watchmen like Lando, we might go back and re-review them in the future if there's a demand for it or a need to do it uh, when we have a larger audience. So we'll see you back next week. All right, bye. Not to mention that following the Fun Home spoiler discussion, we will be reviewing Exit Stage Left, the Snag Post Chronicles. If you want to follow Dead, Dead End Comics, you can follow us on YouTube. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date. You can also keep up to date with us on SoundCloud forward slash Dead End Comics. You can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Dead End Comic Books. And you can find us at Twitter as at Dead End CBC. If you want to participate in our spoiler discussions, or just leave us a comment, you can send those to deadandcomicbooksclub at gmail.com.